More now on the crisis in Iraq. We're joined once again by General Peter Corelli and Martha Raditz in Baghdad. Martha, I want to start with you. You, of course, are on your 23rd trip to Iraq. You were there for virtually every phase of that war. You were there as American troops left uh, Iraq. What, what is your sense? Did you ever envision something like this happening? I think it was always a danger, John. All of us had great hope. I, I love talking to the soldiers on that way out in that convoy. I think we were together for about 45, 45 hours driving out into Kuwait, and all of them said they had great hope, but all of them said that very hesitantly. I think when I walk around these streets, I see people who lost their legs. We, we passed a store today. It was a, a store full of wheelchairs out on the street. You know the Iraqi people have suffered so much, too. I was talking to a couple of 21-year-olds, thinking they were nine years old when the war started. They had the war most of their lives, and there was some hope, but now probably launched back into war, if not in Baghdad, certainly in other parts of the country. And General Krull, you spent two years of your life in Iraq, and you saw nearly 700 men and women under your command who lost their lives. What, what can you say to those families now as they see al-Qaeda on the move in Iraq, Iraq falling into uh, chaos? I, I don't really know what you say to those families. Uh, this has got to be so difficult for them. It's, it's difficult for the almost 4,500 survivors who have, have, have lost loved ones uh, in, in Iraq. It, it's difficult for all the wounded. It's difficult for all those folks who spent much longer than I did, much longer than two years, four, five, six tours over there, and put their lives on hold. Uh, to see this happening uh, is extremely difficult for all of us. I mean, does it mean it was all for nothing? Well, it, it really uh, seems to be that way today. Uh, hopefully things uh, will get better. But, but, but I fear that, you know, we, we just celebrated the 70th anniversary of D-Day and those great Americans not only after the war, but on this anniversary, we were able to go back and see what their sacrifice and the sacrifices that they left behind were able to accomplish. Uh, I fear we have a generation of warriors that will not have that opportunity to ever go back to Iraq and, and really see what their sacrifice was able to provide for the Iraqi people. At least that's how it seems today. Martha, what, what are you hearing from the, uh, the troops that you spent time with in Iraq? I know some of them have been reaching out to you. What are they saying? They're, they're really terribly, terribly upset, John. I'm going to steal the words of one soldier because of kind of the same words I would say. It kills my heart. Uh, well, Martha Raditz, General Peter Corelli, thank you very much for joining us. We now honor our fellow Americans who serve and sacrifice. This week, the Pentagon released the names of six soldiers killed in Afghanistan. That's all for today. Thanks for sharing part of your Sunday with us. Check out World News with David Muir tonight. And to all of the dads out there, especially my father, happy Father's Day.